Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland, and you know what this is. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Let's give the Lord praise and thanksgiving this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. And once again, this week, I mean, we, we had a good time last week. I know you did. But we're here we are once again, KCBC, Fort Worth, Texas, in the sanctuary, Eagle Mountain International Church. And the, the student body is here this morning. Let's give all of ourselves a, a wake up call this morning. And uh, I command you, be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go back wh where we were uh, studying last week in, um, back to 1 Samuel, praise. Please praise God. And um, I, I want to do, do this right away because look at, we want to look at uh, Goliath's size. Now remember, let me, let me remind you again, uh, in the, um, as, as David was talking with his brothers and with the people, he's, I mean, he's right up on the front line. This little guy, and probably, uh, you know, it, it, it probably crowded to be six feet tall because Saul was head and shoulders taller than anybody in Israel. He was a big man. So when Goliath came on the scene, it wasn't what he scared that said that frightened them. It was his size. And um, it, it says he was, uh, Greg, did you bring it up here, Professor. Can you just stay up here with me, please? Professor Greg Stevens, would you let him know you love him? Just stand up here with me. Now go ahead and explain. What that is? What that is, please. That's a cubit. Uh, that's from the Temple Institute in Jerusalem, and that's the measuring device. So you can measure spans with the little notches in there, but that is what a cubit, the size of one cubit. And there you go. There it is right there. And in the, in the um, classic Amplified, it states the cubic is nine inches. So each one of these marks is two. Mm -hmm. So two, 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 four, six, eight, right about here. So his, God's span, because it states that in the 40th chapter of Isaiah, nine inch span. So you can see the difference in, so th this man is nine feet, 10 and a half inches tall. So Noe, come up here and stand beside me, please. <laughs> Noe, I got here now, Buka. That's good to see. Now, 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 understand what I'm saying here? <laughs> now, how tall are you, Noah? 6'10". 6'10". Yes, sir. 6'10". Uh. <laughs> 6'10". Now, this man, you're 6'10". He's nine. Let's see, what was he? Golly, nine. Ten and a half. He's three feet taller than he. And Nora is is a tall, strong man, but this guy's not only tall; he's big. He had to be big because his coat of mail weighed what 125 pounds. Now, I wonder what his helmet weighed. This man is. Huge thanks, Noy. I love you, man. Man, I wish we had a basketball team. Ooh, glory to God. And uh, you know, all you need is Noy. He is a basketball team. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Noy, what, what's, what's, what's your nationality? Where? Nigerian. I knew it from, the, from your name, I could tell. But what part of Nigeria? Okay, so you're a good ways from Lagos. Yeah. yeah. Which direction from Lagos? Which would be what, south? Yeah, that's good, man. Welcome to Fort Worth. <clears throat> I wanted you to get that 
as, um, well, you let Nori be your measuring stick. And now you have a mental concept of what happened. Here's a man comes out there, weighed, probably suited up. He probably weighs 700 pounds, 800 pounds, not an ounce of fat on him. And he's three feet taller than Nori. I mean, you can't, well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's just about the same height as a full grown angel. Mm. Mm. Maybe on up to 12 feet because of those that, that we know have seen them. Yes, sir. And particularly what Ed Dufresne said, that he experienced that in a hotel room. His prosperity angel showed up. And so he said, when he walked out, the, the ceiling disappeared. And he said, if the ceiling hadn't disappeared, he would not have been able to have seen their heads. We're dealing with, we're dealing with some army here. And David said, I come at you in the name of the Lord God of hosts, the Lord God of Saboeth, the God of the angelic armies. You want me to give you another little clue? In the little book of Malachi, the Lord of hosts, particularly talking about your tithe, yeah. Oh, right. uh, God. It says the Lord of hosts 22 times in that little book. Hallelujah. Now, Professor, I, it, this is a reason it is absolutely wonderful to have a Hebrew professor in the house because today he will straighten out with the help of the Spirit of God, yes. some things that have been, I, I've heard, and the, the phrase wasn't wrongly used because the way it was, the way it was used, is there not a cause? Uh, you can get a lot out of that, but that's not what David said. Because that same word, translated cause, is used over and over again. So you have your Bibles open there to 1 Samuel 17 and the 29th verse, David said, uh, what have I done? Is there no cause? He turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. My King James references, little, number one Hebrew word. Does yours have a reference like that in the center reference? word manner. Now, Greg, talk to us about this and, and, and describe here exactly what he said and how it's used through this text. Well, as you, were, as you were teaching yesterday, I went and looked it up in the Hebrew. I was reading that Hebrew ver the, that verse in Hebrew. And that word cause is debar. That word is translated speech or word. So David says, he says, is there now not a word as he's talking to his brother? He gets on down after that. He's actually saying, is there not a word? Is there not a, a speech? And so what's happened is because of this man's size and, and all, they actually have lost their tongue. They've lost their speech. They're not speaking the word. They're not speaking covenant. So he's actually saying, is there not a word? He uses his speech the speech part of his covenant as his first weapon. That's what David does. And it follows all the way through because he said to Goliath, I'm going to kill you. Today. Yes, he did. Verse 30, he turns from his brother. It says, and he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. After the same word. After the same word. And the people answered him again in the former manner. He's trying to get them to agree with the word. He's, 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 he's trying to pull covenant out of somebody. Won't anybody agree with me? So nobody agreed with him, but God, except Saul, except Saul, they take him to Saul and he begins. Now this is the first time. It's very interesting. There's no record of David talking about the lion or the bear to anyone else ever before, but he testifies to Saul that, listen, I can back this up, that God has helped me before with this. And he testifies this to Saul. And um, 
so then you, you went through excellently how they tried to put the armor on him and all that. He didn't need all that armor. He hadn't tested that, but he had tested the word, Brother Cohen. Oh, isn't that good? My goodness, my goodness. Oh, his goodness. Glory the word God. had proven itself. Yes. He didn't have any armor against a lion or a bear. Right. He had no armor against them. And he grabs his staff and the sling. He picks up five stones. And then if you look at this, um, in verse 45, then David said to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come at thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. Yes. And the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied this, this day. day. And he begins to now speak what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. He's calling those things which be not with the army as though they were. Oh, he's he's using awesome. the word yes, as a weapon. Is. Yes, he is. And that's exactly and that's what, what we're did. supposed to do. Yes. I mean, we come at the devil in the name of the Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That name is the name of the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord Advocate General Commander in Chief of the armies of God. Now, there is a man in the Godhead. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, and his sir. name is Jesus. So you can look that word up in the Strong's now, and you'll now find what, it. What, excuse me. Yes, sir. But what is Jesus called? The Word. The Word. The word, He's oh the my Word my become God. flesh. <laughs> hey, that just got my shoes right yeah. there. Hey, man. Amen. Glory yes, to sir. God. Interesting thing you were talking about, Malachi, Lord of hosts. Yes. Malik is the word for an angel. Malachi is a messenger. It literally means the messenger. So that whole book is messaging about angels. He knows stuff. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, sir. Oh, that's good, man. Amen. Praise God. You. Keep your gun on. We may okay. need you here in a minute. <laughs> now, does that, doesn't that excite you? We will be studying these covenants a thousand years from now and still seeing more because it's not going to be all that long soon and very soon. It's not going to be all that long until we will be able to see all this. We will go into the heavenly archives. Amen. Because the Word says there's coming a time when all of us get together, all the body of Christ comes together. Then the great teacher himself, Jesus, is going to go through and straighten out all of our little doctrines and straighten out all of our little ideas <laughs> and get us all on one page. Amen. And the shocking thing is, it took me a while to wrap my self around this. Then he will praise all of us. Where is that? It's in the Bible. Look it up. It's in the second covenant, the new side. I'll give you that clue. <laughs> and don't go to Google. Look it up for yourself. <laughs> Google doesn't know everything. He thinks he does, but he doesn't. Praise God. So, it is the Word. Say it. It is the Word. Now, 1 John chapter 1, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we've seen and bear witness, 
and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. We've seen him. We know him. We've handled him. The word of life. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory, glory. Just, just praise him. 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 Now, that, that was John's first letter. Now, let's go back to Big John. In the beginning, say it. It, let's just read that together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And in Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended him not. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, oh my goodness. Praise you, Jesus. Let's just, oh, I can't read anymore without praising him. Let's just praise him. Just praise God. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, let's go to the 12th verse for the sake of time. As many as received him, to him, to them gave him he power to become sons of God, even them that believe on his name. I come at you in the name of the Lord God of hosts. <laughs> even on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. And he's not the only begotten Son of God anymore. He's the firstborn from many brethren. Amen. Glory to God. Now, one translation says in this right here, and the Word took upon itself flesh. Hallelujah. <laughs> this ought to be exciting enough for today to last you for days and days and days and days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, come on, let's praise Him. Father, we just worship You and praise You this morning. We are so glad. Now then, Go with me to the book of Ephesians, and we will uh, continue in this line in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And now you can see, and you, well, let me put it this way you will see how all this is hooked together. So we go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Now, before we look at this and read this, the Apostle Paul was actually the one to whom God gave uh, the rank and file of Satan's kingdom. Well, through that you can see God's kingdom because Satan can't come up with anything new. No, he can't do it. And, and his rank and file, thank God the Holy Spirit saw fit to line him up from the least up. Put the devil last. Amen. Amen. He's last in authority. He's last in power. The only power he has is what you give him. 
Otherwise, he doesn't have any. Praise God. He's one <laughs> little boy in grade school, and the teacher said, what is a lie? And this little fellow said, it is an abomination to God and ever, ever present help in a time of need. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> no, that's, that's, not, that's not quite right. <laughs> Amen. So now look at this in the sixth chapter of the book of Hebrews. Are you there? Verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? In the power of the Lord in his might. Put on. You, you do it. You put on the whole armor. Don't get half suited up. Don't, don't put yourself in the place of David and stick your hand in that bag and say, uh-oh, I forgot my rocks. I forgot to pick the stones up from a sling. No, don't be there. And somebody says, put on the full armor of God. What did I do with it? Why? Where'd I leave my helmet? <laughs> No, wear it all the time, Amen. particularly in times of prayer and intercession. So now look at, notice this. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, here you go, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Those are the ones, that's, that's the class that possess people. We're going to see it here in just a few more. That's, that's the class that possess people. What is demon possession? That's someone that is completely taken over, spirit and soul. You are a spirit. You have a soul made up of your mind, your emotions, and your will. Spirit and soul and body. Now, do not ever, not ever, don't pay any attention to anybody that says, that a Christian is demon-possessed. A new creature, old things have passed away and all things are of God. This spirit man, is all things are of God. Now, you can get a devil in your flesh and get oppressed in the mind and we're out of time. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.